Okay, so now we're moving on to hearing. This is the second piece of the second <laughs> senses lecture. So we're moving on to hearing for now. Hearing is also going to be using mechanoreceptors. In fact, they use the same exact receptors, the hair cells that we just saw with equilibrium. So they're gonna behave exactly the same way where they activate when they are bent. Okay, so we're gonna go through the hearing structures. What I want you to do is as I go through it, I want you to know the names of them, be able to identify them, but I also want you to know the general function of each piece that I go through. So let's looking at the ear, the ear is, is organized into three different regions. You have the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. The boundary between the outer ear and the middle ear is going to be the tympanic membrane. And the tympanic membrane is also known as the eardrum. So for this class though, I want you to use the words tympanic membrane. Then we have the external acoustic meatus. It's also known as the auditory canal, but I think since you've already learned external acoustic meatus, you might as well use that term, but it's up to you. And then on the outside here, this ear flap, this is the oracle, also known as the pina, pina or oracle. And so the way that this works is the oracle, what it does is it captures sound waves. Okay, you can kind of think that if you kind of make it bigger, you can really, it gets louder because it captures more sound waves. And then what it does is it funnels those sound waves down through the external acoustic meatus, and then the sound waves are going to hit into the tympanic membrane. And as it hits into the tympanic membrane, it's going to make it vibrate back and forth. And then that's gonna be transferred into the middle ear. Okay, so the function of the tympanic membrane is to vibrate at the frequency of the sound wave. Okay, then we have the middle ear, and the middle ear is pretty small, and it contain, doesn't contain all that many structures. So here is the tympanic membrane right here, the eardrum. Connected to the other side of the tympanic membrane is the malleus. Okay, so we've got three little bones in there. Collectively, they're called the auditory ossicles, os, remember OS, OS means bone. So the auditory ossicles are the three bones in the body that are related to hearing. Okay, so the malleus is the very first one that is going to be on the other side of the tympanic membrane so that as the tympanic membrane is vibrating back and forth, that's going to vibrate and move the malleus. And then the malleus is going to hit into the incus. The incus is the second one here. Some in, in, you know, in your elementary school, you might have learned it as the anvil, so the hammer and the anvil, but for this class, make sure you use malleus and the incus. And then connected to the incus, the incus is going to hit into the stapes, also known as stapes. However you want to pronounce it is fine with me. So the malleus is the first one, the incus is the second one, and the stapes or stapes is the last one here. That's the stirrup because it has like that stirrup shape. And then the stirrup or the stapes is connected to a soft membrane on the other side. So if here's your stapes, that's going to connect to the oval window, which will then take it into the inner ear, into the cochlea. Okay, so we have three auditory ossicles, malleus, incus, and then stapes or stapes. Now, also in that um, middle ear here, you also have two muscles, and the function of both of those muscles is to contract, to hold things steady, and what they do is they help protect the hair cells in the cochlea from vibrations that are too intense, so noises that are too loud. 
So when the noises become too loud and the vibrations are too intense, that would damage those hair cells. And so what they do instead is the tensor tympani muscle, which is the one that's connected to the malleus, and the stapedius muscle, which is the one connected to the stapes, those are, they're gonna contract. And what that does is that holds on to them and stabilizes them and prevents them from vibrating back and forth as much. And that helps protect the inner ear from uh, excessive noise. Now, one thing that I wanted to point out is um, if you've ever gone to, I don't know, like a concert or something where it's really loud for a long period of time and then you kind of leave and you do, your ears just feel muffled and numb, it's because the tensor tympani muscle and the stapedius muscle are, are still kind of holding on and they kind of help dampen the sound for a little bit. Okay, the other structure that is found in the inner ear, see this canal kind of leaving off of it, that's called the pharyngotympanic muscle, sorry, pharyngotympanic tube, also known as eustachian tube. I prefer the, the term pharyngotympanic because it reminds me where it goes, right? So you, it connects from the tympanic region, which is the ear, the tympanic membrane, and where does it go? Pharyngo means throat. So this is going to connect and it actually connects to the back of the throat. And the function of the pharyngotympanic tube is to equalize the pressure in the middle ear to atmospheric pressure. So the pressure outside of it. And if you've ever like gone in an airplane or maybe just gone up a steep hill in the mountains, uh, you, when you pop your ears, what you're doing is equalizing the pressure on the outside compared to the inside. And it also, the pharyngotympanic membrane also, pharyngotympanic tube also helps drain fluid from the middle ear so you don't have an accumulation of fluid. And that's why in children, when they have a very small pharyngotympanic tube that's not fully developed yet, sometimes you can get a backup of fluid in that middle ear right there and that fluid can become infected and that's how you can get ear infections. Um, I did want to do a little public service announcements. I do suggest that you go and get on Amazon, they have them pretty cheap, you can get an otoscope which is basically this, a little light and a little magnifying glass and you can actually look for signs of infection yourself. So what you want to do is you want to take the, the oracle, the, the ear flap here, pull it up and out, and then you want to, that just straightens out the, um, the external acoustic meatus and stick this in. Just make sure that you don't stick it in too far because if you do, you can damage the tympanic membrane. So pick it up and out, and then just sort of look in and kind of gently move in a circle. And what you're looking for is here is the tympanic membrane, that solid structure right behind it, that would be the malleus that's connected to the tympanic membrane. And if it is healthy, it should have a nice whitish pearly color to it. If it is infected, it'll have these all, it'll be very like puffy and red and that's that means that shows signs that it's probably infected and you might want to go to the doctor for that. Okay so what was the name of the auditory ossicle connected to the tympanic membrane? So remember ossicles that's one of those three tiny bones those are what that's the name of them collectively. Which one is connected to the tympanic membrane? That would be the malleus. Okay into the inner ear. In the inner ear, remember that you do have the vestibular apparatus that is for equilibrium. The other structure in the inner ear is the thing that looks like a snail, that's called the cochlea. Okay, so this is pronounced cochlea or cochlea, but usually people say cochlea. And it's, it's wound up and it has a point at the top that's called the apex. Okay, and then you would have the base at the bottom. So anytime you have any organ, so heart, lungs, cochlea, anytime you have a flat side and a pointy side, the pointy side is going to be called the apex and the flat side is going to be called the base. Okay, so the apex just refers to the, the, the top of the, the pyramid as it spirals upwards. 
Now in this cochlea, just as we already saw with the vestibular apparatus, we have a bony outside and then running along the inside following the spiral is a soft membrane. That soft membrane is called the cochlea, cochlear duct. Okay, so here is the cochlear duct on the inside here. And remember that follows the spiral as it goes up in the cochlea and inside the cochlea duct is a fluid called endolymph and then what it does is because the cochlear duct is connected to the bony wall okay what we what that then does is it creates a top chamber and a bottom chamber so in the middle here that's the cochlear duct Okay, also known as scala media. If you ever see that term, it's the same thing as cochlear duct. I prefer cochlear duct. Okay, so we have the cochlear duct in the middle. The top chamber is going to be filled with perilymph, and the top chamber is called the scala vestibuli. Okay, so the scala vestibuli on the top. And then in the bottom chamber, also filled with perilymph, is the scala tympani. Okay, so three chambers as it follows around inside. Now, inside of the cochlea duct, that's where you're going to find the organ of hearing. Okay, so from now on, your organ of hearing is not your ears. It's more specific than that. It's the spiral organ of cordy, sometimes just referred to as the spiral organ. And it's called that because it, it follows the spiral going into the cochlea. Okay, so what we're looking at here is just the transverse section through it. And what we're going to be looking at now is that spiral organ of cordy with more detail. Okay, so again, we're looking at, so if you have a spiral around, you cut it in half, we're gonna look at this part right here. Okay, so looking at just this piece right here. This is what it looks like in the microscope. So the whole thing is called the spiral organ of cordy. It includes the receptor cells, which are called hair cells. Remember, they're hair cells because they have their little stereocilia sticking out on top. The, you have inner hair cells that are on this side and then outer hair cells that are on that side. The inner hair cells are the ones that are actually going to be activated um, based on um, to hear sound waves. And the outer hair cells, they have a different function. They actually help um, stabilize the membrane there. Okay, so here we have the hair cells with their stereocilia. Sitting on top is another kind of jelly-like membrane. This one's a little stiffer though. This one is called the tectorial membrane. So the, the stereocilia of the hair cells are going to be embedded into the tectorial membrane. And then the hair cells are sitting on another membrane, which would be the floor of this of the cochlear duct that's called the basilar membrane okay the basilar membrane and then the roof of the cochlear duct is called the the vestibular membrane okay so the way that this works and you'll get this if you do go into physiology you'll get this later on but the basic gist of how this works is when you have sound waves, those sound waves are gonna be transferred from the outer ear, so the tympanic moving membrane moving back and forth, through the auditory ossicles, and then that the stapes is going to connect to a little membrane that, that's called the oval membrane that's connected to the stapes. And as the stapes is moving back and forth, that's going to hit against the oval membrane, and that'll create fluid waves in that uh, in the endolymph of the cochlear duct. And what happens is it makes it so that it starts flu um, like creating like physical waves, like think of like the ocean, like that, like physical fluid waves. And those fluid waves are gonna make it so that the tectorial membrane, uh, sorry, those fluid waves are gonna make it so that the basilar membrane, not the tectorial membrane, the basilar membrane on the bottom is gonna start moving up and down. Okay, so think of like something bobbing on the ocean. It's moving up and down. And sitting on top of that basilar membrane is going to be the hair cells. Okay, so here's your basilar membrane moving up and down. That makes it so that the hair cells are also going to be moving up and down, and they are going to be embedded in the tectorial membrane. So the tectorial membrane is sort of like a ceiling. 
Okay, so the hair cells, as they're jumping up and down from the, from the basal membrane moving up and down, like something bobbing in the water, the, the hair cells are going to hit into the tectorial membrane. And as they hit into the tectorial membrane, that's going to make it so the little stereocilia bend. And when the stereocilia bend, that's going to activate it. And that's how you, um, that's going to take the information to the brain. And that's how you um, interpret that as sound. Okay, so that's all physiology though. For anatomy, make, what I want you to do is learn the structures so that when you do go to physiology, you'll know already what all those structures are called. Okay, so basilar membrane, basilar base, bottom, hair cells, receptors with the stereocilia, the roof that, or the membrane that the stereocilia are hitting into, that's the tectorial membrane. Collectively, this whole thing is the spiral organ of Corti. Now, one thing I didn't mention here is going back to your cranial nerves, what would be the name of this cranial nerve that, all, that the, the um, hair cells are going to synapse with and create a nerve? That would be the vestibular cochlear nerve. Okay, so that's gonna bring that information to the brain, sensory information in. Okay, so the equilibrium and the auditory canal, both of those are going to go to the same cranial nerve that brings it towards the brain, and that is both the vestibular cochlear nerve. Cochlear for hearing, vestibular part for the vestibular apparatus, that's the equilibrium. It'll come together and that then goes to the brain as one full piece. Okay, so what I want you to do right now is go ahead and look at this, pause it, Try to go through this by yourself, and then I'm gonna go through it right now. So I, I, I want to practice learning the structures by also looking at the functions and the, and the process for hearing. So the sound waves are going to be collected by the auricles, funneled into the external acoustic meatus, also known as auditory canal, or or um, sometimes acoustic canal too. And the sound waves are gonna be converted into the, what's the name, for, what's the other name for eardrum? Tympanic membrane. The tympanic membrane starts to vibrate and those are going to be transferred to the inner ear by the, if we're looking for the collective name, that would be the auditory ossicles. There are three of them. The first one is the malleus. Then we have the incus. Then we have the stapes or stapes. And then from there, the vibrations are going to be converted into pressure, into fluid waves, okay, inside of the cochlear duct. Okay, so we have the endolymph in the cochlear duct. That's going to make the basilar membrane jump up and down. The hair cells that are sit on it are going to now also vibrate up and down. That causes the hair cells to hit into the tectorial membrane. Okay, so the tectorial membrane, that, that, was a, that was a structure that kind of sticks outward that the hair cells embed into. When they bend, that's going to activate the hair cells. That information is going to be sent to the brain using the vestibular cochlear nerve. Okay, so remember for anatomy, the, the focus is to learn the names of the structures, but I do think it would be worthwhile to know a general understanding of how things work. Okay, that's enough for now. Move on to vision.